Hey, what's up? Leroy here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Today we have a longer uh, than usual portrait painting process. Um, following all the insights and ideas I gained, I want to share with you this one. The result is fairly realistic. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, so let's get to it now. Uh, if you want to follow my lead and try and paint this one yourself, uh, you can download my scan. I will put a link below. You can recreate it, trace it and go ahead. Um, but this is going to be, again, a bit of a longer one, so kind of <laughs> buckle up, get a, something to drink, maybe around an hour-long process. I did want to share this one with you. Um, so the entire idea is my main, main, main insight was I was consistently not using enough water. Uh, for my watercolors. And by the way, I'm gonna try and make this video entertaining even if you don't watch the whole thing, if you kind of listen and, and take a look once in a while if you wanna listen in while you're doing something else. But basically my main insight with um, watercolor was I'm consistently not using enough water. And it's something I've taken to heart because watercolor is after all water color. Uh, and I found this fact about watercolor that the more water you use, the more time you have. And I'm, I keep learning and relearning this. So this greatly informs my decisions here. And you're going to see mainly that I'm using more water. So uh, I'm following this process where I see a lot of the uh, Korean and generally uh, Eastern watercolor painter use, painters use um, like Mi Bu and Jung Sung Hoon, uh, and um, where they uh, kind of merge the background with the portrait. Now, this is almost a side quest I'm taking, uh, almost like a video game where I'm trying something a little different. Ultimately, I'll probably bring it over to how I like to do things, but for now, I'm trying to follow something I'm seeing somewhere else because it, it looks interesting to me. So uh, I am allowing some parts of my portrait to merge with the background. The way I do this is, if you notice, the first layer of the background was very wet. It's still quite wet. Now, don't be mistaken, what you're seeing right now is all wet on dry. I did not pre-wet anything but the areas where I put the first wash, essentially, right? So right now I am working wet and wet on areas that I put wet on dry, okay? So the main thing I'm attempting to try, look at me, they're going pre-wetting so that when I come back with paint, it's gonna have a soft edge. Um, so, but, but this is like micro pre-wetting. Uh, most of what you're seeing right now is again, uh, wet on dry. And the idea is to give it a lot more breathing time so that I can go back right now to the hair and uh, uh, in a few moments and start darkening even more um, and really taking my time. The idea is um, I want to take this opportunity of painting the background and establishing any of the envelopes and the edges of the of the portrait because that's my greatest opportunity to do that right uh, after it's done i can start focusing on the face now you could do this either way you can start with the face then do the background and hair and, and merge the two together you don't even have to merge anything it's just a look that i particularly enjoy so i want to try it out now look at how dark i'm starting to go there uh, and I'm going to go even darker in a few moments. As the paint dries, I can start putting in dark lines like the ones I'm going to put in now that will remain pretty visible. They will dry pretty visible because the, the paint on paper is starting to get a little dry so the spread isn't as strong and the paint I'm using is very thick. Now, the mistake I used to do a lot in the past was I would think... I'm starting uh, quite wet uh, when I wasn't. Um, and, and here's what's fascinating for me. The technique here is, pri is, is secondary. The question I was asking myself, and I even shared this, I believe, in a video and in a live stream, is why am I not already making the kinds of paintings I want? So I did find the reason, the thing that was standing in my way was going too strong, too fast, um, now, nothing against Alla Prima. I love Alla Prima. The question is, are you looking for a certain level of accuracy? And here I am lifting. I dry the brush with the tissue. And I'm going to lift because there's a nice highlight of the hair there. Um, so you see I'm maximizing. I can do all of this because I used wet enough paint. So the question I was asking myself is, again, why am I not already painting the kind of paintings I want? The, 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 the main technical reason was 
the not using wet enough paint, but there is a reason underneath it because I've known this for a while and I still didn't do it. So what was stopping me from using the the correct um, the correct wetness for the purpose I was after? And that reason that came to me was I was in a hurry. It always goes back to the mental side of things. I was in a hurry to get the result, quote unquote. Again, nothing wrong with going a la prima and direct, but I found that for some paintings, it wasn't attaining the purpose I was actually after. And that's a problem because I did not get the results I wanted, right? When I am following that direct, bold, a la prima result, that's great. When I'm not, however, it's a problem. So look at how wet the right and left sides are. I get a bead and it's not going anywhere, which means I can take my time, you know, do all this work and then continue with the bead. Uh, so here I am, um, very leisurely extending the background wash. Now, one thing to pay attention to is the background should go, should go much darker. That's kind of a thing where I was so focused on the portrait, I completely forgot. Um, I do go a little darker here in a second, but you'll you'll see later on is where I darken it properly. It'll, it's going to look dark. It's not going to be dark enough now. Um, because again, it's a super wet wash. And, and I have to now adjust for trying something new, which is I'm using a lot of water. I need to take that into consideration. Um, so uh, we're just moving along here uh, with the portrait. Um, pushing the background around and I'm starting to think now, okay, here there's going to be a sharp edge, so I'm not too worried about, uh, again, it's going to look dark. It's not going to be dark enough in a few seconds. I don't have to worry about merging anything too much, maybe just some details, some mild shadows on the cheek, which you'll see in a second, but this is the, the part of the portrait that needs to have a strong, uh, sharp contrast mostly. Uh, just because there's a strong contrast between the light cheek and the background. As for the right side, that's where I'm establishing more of the softer transitions, right? I'm going to grab some coffee. I have some <laughs> coffee and Coke because I need to uh, hydrate while doing these kinds of long videos. But here I am merging where the shadow is uh, with the background. I am going to be using these opportunities, but um, I'm not going to worry too much where, where it's not a must. Now, you'll notice some things here. I'm, I'm pre-wetting and then putting some paint in. I um, let too much of the paint spread, so I'm going to be losing some highlights, and that's fine. It's not the end of the world. I'll bring them back later. But notice what, what I established here, especially with the glasses. They allowed me to stop the wash on the right side and really gave me a lot of time to work on the hair, work on the left section, on the background. Um, once I'm going to continue that wash on the side of the face, I'm very aware that it's a big shadow. So that's where I need to summon it. And this is where I should have lifted more, by the way, that more of the dark chick. I should have lifted it now because later it's going to come back and bite me. Um, so you'll see, but you'll see, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. And I did get this nice smooth transition there with the cheek. So it was worth it. Um, uh, now, this shadow is quite separate, so I can stop there. You see, uh, that was a big advantage of this left side. Um, I'm going to put in some of the darker sections of it. Uh, wet and wet now. Now it's wet over the paint I already put there. Um, one thing I have kind of stumbled upon is it doesn't really matter what areas you merge on a larger scale. And you know, I'm a big proponent of merging shapes if possible. You've, you've seen me do this throughout the process, but it doesn't matter if I merge now this shape on the left side of the face with the nose and the right side. You don't always have to extend the shapes you're merging. Um, it's more about, to me at least, it's more about how much can I bring out of a wet area, even if that wet area is separate from other wet areas which is a question I got recently. Um, I don't remember who asked it, but like, how do I decide what areas I pre-wet and separate different areas? And, you know, I'm starting to realize it really isn't about um, merging everything, all the things that are possible to merge together, especially in these kinds of portraits with smooth transitions and a lot of gentle touch. Um, it just is very nerve wracking because you think, okay, how am I going to paint this entire shape of shadow in one go? And it's very challenging. And then what you end up doing is losing on the interesting soft edges, losing on the nuanced transitions in value because you're focused on filling in such a big shape. So it doesn't matter as much how many areas you merge. It more matters to me, the area I'm currently working on, how much I can squeeze out of a wet wash 
to create these soft transitions where I'm already working. Does that make sense? Because that's a big paradigm shift for me. Okay, I can be less worried about merging each and every single shape. Um, kind of like I did here, stopping with the glasses in the past, because the glasses are still, this line is still dark, but, you know, I would have painted right through it and continued, but then I would struggle with all this side of the face that is all dark. It's very hard to do. Um, so that's my uh, kind of two cents on that, right? I hope it makes sense. Leave a com uh, comments and questions below. I'll, I'll be happy to answer. Now, as for the glasses, I didn't talk too much about those. It was a simple wash. There is a dark part on the glasses. There's a light part. I just darkened the dark part. I didn't push it to be too dark um, because I wanted to get the flow, right? Again, a bit of a paradigm shift. I'm going to use smoother, uh, wetter washes to prioritize flow over value. Flow over getting the right value immediately, right? Now, I'm continuing the trend on the right side of the face where I'm really attempting to... Uh, continue the smooth edge of the hair, right? Let me blow, blow my nose. Try to do it off mic. I'm not gonna edit this one, so you know, whatever goes, goes, because it's one hour long and I really uh, just want us to get through it together. Um, and again, if you haven't grabbed a drink or anything, you know, yeah, maybe pause the video, now is the time, uh, and really relax here. Um, so, yeah. Um, Continuing to feed uh, my uh, this side of the hair uh, quite gently uh, with darker and darker paint. Now I'm very aware of the angle because if the angle is too much to the right, my hair is going to spill too much into the background, spread too much. I don't want it. So what you can do is tilt it the other way, push it towards the ear, right? Uh, and now everything is dry. Uh, had I been a little more proficient, I might have been able to merge this with parts of the face, you know, to maybe uh, aspire for more. But I tried not to be too... Uh, greedy here with my washes because again prioritizing flow over getting a lot done in fewer washes okay um, so now it is time to do the next and final wash over the glasses uh, now we're talking about smaller shapes and, and I can um, push myself to finalize these in one go um, I'm aiming for a slightly higher key than the original I am mimicking the values I'm seeing for the most part, but it's going to be a touch lighter, and you can tell with the hair. Um, and I love that. I want to preserve that flow I got in the first wash. Um, so I'm painting over these abstract shapes. You know, some people um, have trouble with this. As long as you're able to see things as just the, the abstract, meaningless shapes that they are, you're good. Uh, as long as you can do that, it's, it really is one of the easiest stages of the painting. The reason I did this was maybe kind of avoiding that hard wash on the right side of the face. Uh, that's going to be very taxing, so I kind of um, continued with the glasses. One more reason is if you get your darkest darks in, uh, it can help you orient yourself uh, with the other values. Uh, so it's almost like, okay, I'm defining this is as dark as I'm going to go, and everything else has to fit in between the paper white and this. Um, now I noticed that the white on the glasses actually isn't white, so I'm using just clean water to extend the wet area into the open area. And what this does is it makes it just a touch darker. Just a touch. I could come back with more paint. Um, here I come back with, again, a damp brush, just kind of smearing that. Maybe I'll lift later if I have to. Um, but this is an easy stage of just rendering the, the abstract shapes. I'm going to come back with some darker washes and start establishing because you can see through the glasses, especially the left side. You can see the um, shape of the face there. You'll notice the cheek uh, and a bit of the shadows on the face themselves itself. Um, and this is a great opportunity, by the way. If you have these dark glasses that are contained within a singular shape, you can really take advantage of this and establish, as I mentioned, your darkest dark in a very controlled rolled small environment um, so you get a huge benefit out of it now I can know okay I need to push the hair to be this darker I need the right side of the face to be this much darker um, because I have the darkest darks already set up it's a great way to go um, and I have just a, con a perfect contained shape to go by look at how this lifting this really establishes that cheek right I love that um, this was a great opportunity, the sunglasses. I don't have to paint the eyes, which is a big advantage. The eyes have a lot of nuance of light and shadow around them too. Uh, it wasn't by, it was pure accident. I just loved the light and shadow setup in this one. And as I started um, painting it, I'm like, oh, the eyes aren't visible here, uh, you know, but whatever. 
because I do the eyes are a nice window into the character of the person you're I'm sure paintings with eyes and not sunglasses will end up being more popular generally speaking but that's fine uh, doing the exact same thing on the right side of the face now one thing to note um, with watercolor is um, you can push it and render it more and more to make it more accurate as long as you didn't go dark enough the reason I'm saying that is, if you look at the mouth especially, it's, it looks cringe right now. It looks bad. It looks like teeth, you know? You can see all the teeth. It looks weird. And that's okay. That's how it is. That's the ugly stage. It's not an ugly stage at all. It is just an incomplete stage. Um, so when you don't have all the light and shadow and nuances, things will look weird. They will read weird. That is perfectly normal. Um, so you you just get more and more chances to bring it towards the necessary values. That's it. Um, if you mess it up royally along the way, yes, maybe you'll have to do another version of the painting. Yes, maybe you'll have to lift. Maybe it will end up completely failing, quote unquote. But to me, that's not failure. That's just one painting that didn't go my way. Uh, and it was just a learning experience. I'm going to talk about this soon. The ultimate failure is to never having arrived at a point where you want to go. So um, if, you're, if you've been painting for three years and all you produce is paintings you hate, you have not failed. You're just on the way. Now, ultimately, in 20, 30 years, 40, 50 years, you may end up dying without ever painting one single painting you love. That, to me, is failure. But that is something you have a lot more control over. Um, at least a lot more than people think. Uh, so I'm not worried about failure. I'm more worried about ultimate failure. And I kind of believe I arrived at a point where, you know, I have five to ten paintings I can say I'm so proud of and they're the, the essence of who I am and what I am as an artist. So I already, in a way, I already arrived, which is a great place to be in. And I'm sure you can too. Um, so you see me now starting to prep for what is to be a challenging wash. This is the entire side of the face. Now, you're noticing a few highlights there, right next to the, the smile here, and uh, here where the um, mustache is, uh, parts of the beard on the cheek. These all may appear light. They're actually darker than the light side. And this is something you'll learn to notice with time. It's it's. I think it's an optical illusion most people are familiar with by now <laughs> in the art world. Uh, what happens is generally the pre-wetting to get a soft edge. I'm going to start with the nose because <coughs> I want to work left to right. Um, everything on the shadow side, which is, it appears to be here, everything on the shadow side is going to be darker than the, the highlight. Everything. There is nothing there that, and you'll see this, uh, you'll see this illusion uh, with time. So there we go. First line. Now, remember, while you move the brush, the paint is not going to spread out. The moment you lift it, that's when it's going to spread. So as long as you keep it moving, and I've shown this in a video about wet and wet technique, as long as you keep it moving, the paint's not going to go too much into the wet area. Okay, something to have in mind. Now look at how as we start establishing these shapes, things start making more sense. The face starts to look like the thing it looks. Because right now we've essentially told the viewer this part is beveled out outward. The nose, right? There is a shadow that it casts. There are edges. There is a smooth transition there. We're starting to tell the full story. Okay. Now I'm gonna try again. Do this with a very wet wash and maximize how much I bring out of it. You will see some patches, even in this process that I'm very proud of. There are still some patches of unevenness because I still didn't work fast enough and wet enough to begin with, uh, and that is uh, totally fine. So uh, you know that that's part of it. Um, so what I'm attempting to do here is really just gently, um, and I'm going over areas that are already painted to keep it smooth uh, because of what I just said. Uh, I'm just trying to darken the whole side of the face that needs darkening. The only thing I'm worried about is the edges. The reason is I'm not going to get too much nuances here in value because it's going to be it's going to be very time consuming. Uh, and I, I'll just end up with a patchy wash as I always have in the past, you know, because I just didn't take care of these uh, things, the speed especially. So right now I'm only caring about dividing the face into two. Light, dark, done. 
Uh, probably could have covered again the glasses because that's it's a little darker. It's in the shadow, but that's fine. I'm going to do it later on. Uh, the biggest challenge is just interpreting the shadows and edges. But I have d done a lot of cross hatching that tells me the story, right? So cross hatching is quite uh, useful in that context. Um, the the thing I'm worried about is making sure I leave the highlights light and the edges soft where they need to be. Okay, that's going to be my main struggle. And you see when when struggle because some parts are starting to dry, right? So when I'm working on these edges, I am the the points where the wash I'm taking a pause. That's when, as I come back, I may end up with patches. Okay, you'll notice this right now where I put the around here on the other side of it here. You'll notice a bit of a patch, but notice how I pre-wet, put the chin in, you know, all of these things. I could have pre-wetted some of these areas in advance, honestly. Now, one more thing is sometimes you'll need, look at the nose, the, the line already dried a little harder. Sometimes you'll need a few goes at softening uh, edges. It's very common. I forgot here, but I will soften it later on. As long as the color you're using isn't too, I guess, staining, um, it can be smoothened out later on usually with fair bit of success as long as the wash is still light um so here we go we're pretty much done with this wash now i want a smooth transition there so i kind of used some water to push the edge of the shadow and everything is dry i would call this wash a success i think it's fairly even you see some patchiness here in the cheek like here right a bit of patchiness but that's fine smoothening the edge wasn't too hard to uh Oh, by the way, I haven't even mentioned the only color I'm using is Neutral Tint by Daniel Smith. Not using any other color, just Neutral Tint. Again, keeping it simple. Had I brought, had I brought paint into this, it would have been much harder for me, I admit. Because uh, it's hard for me to think of color as I'm thinking of value and all of these nuances. Very challenging for me. Uh, so you see me softening some edges now that everything is dry, I can take my time. Um, loosen up some of these. Uh, of course, it's not going to be as good as doing it immediately, but it's decent. It, it does uh, get the job done in a way, right? Uh, if anything, the lesson for me is uh, maybe pre-wet more of these edges because that will allow me more time um, to not do it while the wash is drying. Um, so now I'm starting to establish this kind of a slightly darker shadow there. This was a good point to just continue to wash over the glasses, but that's fine. Um, there's a bit of, a, again, darker transition where the temple is. That's where the plane of the face changes. You can see it here. It's a very sharp transition, which leads to uh, generally uh, uh, a change in light and shadow. It's fairly sharp. Uh, but while I have this wash wet, you know, I could push it and start darkening the hair. Uh, but honestly, I w didn't want to take too much of a risk there. Uh, I was a bit of a coward. Um, but here uh, we're going to move on to the next very challenging wash. I should have painted through the glasses now that I see. Should have definitely painted through them. Get a smooth transition there. Now look at what happens, right? I'm going to do another wash thin, but this time I'm going to start thinking about uh, gentle value transitions. This area is light. I'm coming back with clean, damp brush with just clean water. And if I put the water there, it's going to maintain a bit of a lighter feel. So you see, I, I've established this light feel right next to the eye where the glasses are. And I, I will continue observing this area as, as I work on the wash to make sure it doesn't go um, too dark, right? But still, this is just another thin wash. So I'm going to have more opportunities to darken what's necessary. Now here, I decided not to bring the nose into the mix. So I'm just stopping it near the bottom. Again, remember the insight? You don't have to merge every single shape. In fact, one good trick is to soften the edge so that later you can come back and it feels smooth. You'll see me softening the edge under the nose for now. Um, just because I have so much to worry about on the side of the face, I didn't want to bring the nose into this equation. Uh, but notice again, I don't have a strong bead here. That's a problem. That is going to be a problem later because this area is going to dry a little patchy. Okay, so... Um, and, and especially for a wash that is not on clean, pure paper, but another wash. Um, so here I'm softening the edges, so soften everything, like the lip, this transition here, everything. But I didn't, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, softening this is very important. Again, I don't want this to move into the nose. I just want to get some um, 
soft vague transition there i can later on uh, bring more of the nose but look at how it starts to dry a little patchy on the side of the face okay uh lesson learned maybe pre-wet more areas that you want to keep light and smooth transition like i could pre-wet this area and the cheek and here and only then begin my wash um so this is a big learning experience for me um I learned I need more water, and now I'm learning another lesson. I maybe need more water before I even start putting the paint to paper. Because the moment you start a wash, you have an edge to worry about, right? You have an edge to worry that is, doesn't going to dry on you and all of that. Um, like this edge I'm working on now. Should have pretty wet, right? And this brings me to an interesting point, right? So during the course of a painting, you'll make a lot of good decisions, maybe a lot of bad decisions, maybe a lot of okay decisions, and the painting will end up being the culmination of all of the decisions you'll make. The more correct decisions you'll make, correct again, quote unquote, correct for the impression you're after, the more correct decisions for the impression you're after that you'll make, the more it's gonna look like the impression you're after. What I'm trying to say is, um, it's not about success or failure. It's not about good painting, bad painting. It's not about good result, bad result. It's all in the percentages. The painting is not, if you made a couple of bad decisions, still maybe your good decisions completely overweigh um, and overpower your bad decisions. Quote unquote, again, bad and good, no bad and good, right? It's all for the purpose you're after. Sometimes you don't know the purpose you're after, you're gonna make a bunch of bad decisions because <clears throat> you don't know where to aim really and that's fine that's part of experimentation you know but the the point is don't get this you know i don't get discouraged it's very hard to tell you that and you, and you won't feel it you have to feel it viscerally in order to actually have it help you but let me just try and give this as a perspective the the fact of the matter is uh the more right decisions you make the better the, the painting is going to be and no mistake is a killer of the painting let these words sink in however you wish. You know, if it works for you, it works for you. I can't tell you to not worry and then you won't worry. But just know that's where I'm coming from. Um, you know, failure is just the ultimate failure. It's nothing else. Now I'm lifting that cheek I told you about earlier. Um, failure is, is to die without ever having painted a painting you love or are proud of. That's failure. Everything else is just a, an experiment along the way. Um, if you are in a position that you've already painted something you're super proud of and you've you've been fully uh, immersed in, let's say you're already you've already won, you've already arrived somewhere worth uh, arriving, uh, right? So hopefully that perspective, um, if relevant to you, will will maybe benefit some. Uh, now I pre wet and it's time to start establishing the nose more seriously. Um, I will aspire in this shape to put everything together, right? The nostrils, the shadow underneath it is good a good candidate to merge because it's it's darker. It's very easy to move from a light wash to a dark section because then you're much less likely to create cauliflowers. Um, <coughs> anything that's extreme, like light to dark or dark to light, tends to be good, but, but I would say um, a, a light to dark transition is much easier because you already need to darken the paint to do wet and wet. So when you have again, a shadow here that's mid-value and then underneath it very dark, it's just helping you with the process. It's just a freebie in terms of easier technique, right? So I'm gonna bring in some thicker paint and gradually start to build the shape of the nostrils. Ideally, I would have wanted to lift that very gentle highlight above the nostril within the shadow. Uh, I don't think I'll make it this time, but that's fine. Uh, the paint is starting to get very thick though. Um, and as I move again to this space here, I love that. I This thickness helps me. Uh, now I end up not working fast enough here. Um, so I could have done this area a little better, I feel like, but 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 you start to get a feel for the structure of the nose. It's It mostly works. Um, and that's where you wanna be. Notice how now the teeth are, fine. and here I'm trying to lift a bit of um, that, that highlight on the side, the wings of the nostril let's say, and I have my uh, tissue right next to me because I find that I really need to absorb out all the paint uh, from the brush. 
Uh, here I should have scrubbed it more and helped the, this dark value move a little more. That was my mistake, by the way. Because um, right now I have a dark and then a light underneath it. Should have just kept it, you know, moving a little better. I'm going to soften this transition again. I'm going to keep things contained in this area right here. Right right, right here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just keeping them contained. Doing some wet and wetter I need to darken. And keeping that lighter area light now i already established the core shadow so everything in the shadow is darker than the highlight so i'm fine i can leave a few areas like this one lighter come back with a damp brush lift them and leave them as a lighter section now one thing to remember as you lift is you absorb the water so it's going to be harder to bring back wetness into an area you already lifted just something to be aware of you know if you've done it Anything I'm talking about that's purely a intellectual concept to you won't help too much. If you've experienced this before, then this may explain why. When you have a wet wash and you lift very harshly with a dry brush, a fully dry brush, the area you lifted is now maybe 5% damp. So bringing back paint to that point and expect, expecting it to disperse evenly and be wet and wet is not gonna happen. Uh, and if you put dark areas next to that area you lifted, it's not gonna flow that well into the lifted area. It's nuances of control we're talking about. It's things the only way to really get is to experience if you experience this, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, that's perfectly fine. Maybe you'll experience it and then you'll be like, oh yeah, Liron talked about that. Um, so yeah. Blow my nose. Maybe take a sip of my Coke. Uh, it's zero. I just need to hydrate in these long videos. Very unhealthy and very tasty. Don't worry about me, by the way. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm... <laughs> I'm working out and I'm eating fairly okay. So but this is my treat almost uh, as I do these, this video. Now I'm going to move into the mouth area, as you can tell. I'm going to try and establish everything in one go and ideally not return to this area again. And I think that was a success here. Um, the key thing is, again, I have a wet uh, a mid value area and then a dark underneath the teeth. <coughs> That's the thing you want to be careful of. Establish all the darks without moving too much into the lights. Um, if you can really get the shape of the teeth down, that's ideal. I think I managed to do it quite decently here. Sometimes you'll mess it up a bit, so you'll have to lift back, paint over, lift back, paint over. Um, the better you get, the more you'll be able to do this in one go. Um, there is a teeth here, uh, right here. Behind the other teeth, I'm going to lift that in a second and you'll see it's a cool little technique of just lifting um, and now it starts to make more sense right the teeth were the cringiest part of it I think here we go lifting back that uh, hind teeth I don't know how to call it the I guess it's a molar teeth it's right here maybe or something like that um, and the mouth now is less cringy right um, the teeth now make more sense now still so this part has the right value, but all of this is still too light, right? So this is the idea. You're pushing it more and more towards an, the accuracy, right? I pre-wet here because there's a highlight and then it gets dark. Look at the nuance of the glasses. See how some light passes through? Now, it's actually not going to dry as well as I'd hoped for. I should probably now lift again, but that's fine. But it was a cool attempt, right? Get a wet wash under it, start to paint so that you'll get a, a small area where it's um, lighter. One thing I need to remember is to, to really work the areas that are still wet. Really try and push them all the way to the final value. It's something that I kind of have been focusing on a lot of new things for me in this portrait, so I kind of forgot. Um... But yeah, I was talking about um, the context, building it up, pushing it more towards accuracy. Um, that's how it. That's how it works. This is what it's all about. Now, uh, seeing this process again, the better you are, the more you can establish with fewer washes. But there's no need to make that the goal. Uh, there's no need to make the goal the fewest washes possible, because some paintings, uh, and definitely stipulated based on your level, right? Um, is that the right way to put it? I don't know, but the, you know, the the if you are still a beginner to a certain technique or a certain approach or a certain subject, even such as portraits, 
Uh, more washes is not uh, does not mean you're you're not a good artist or anything bad. It doesn't mean anything. It just means you need more washes to finish it up. So look at the amount of washes, right? This side of the face, it's already we've done two washes, right? We've done one, two, and it's still too light. Um, it still requires more. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is feel free to you know do it as, in as many washes as you need to establish the impression you need and there is no way around it. This is why this video is one hour long. These things take time and I didn't even include the, the drawing which there's nothing to include. I traced it. I placed the paper over my computer screen and just traced it because it's the most accurate way of doing it um, and I don't care about the drawing for this one. So I'm pre-wetting again the areas that need to be a little lighter and now I'm doing this, okay, one thing to, to have in mind, don't scrub too much so you don't lift. Try to be as soft like in one go as possible, but make sure it's wet enough. Um, that's the kind of things I, uh, I learn with, with experience. And hopefully, and, and you see the tip of the brush had too much paint, so that was dangerous, but hopefully I was able to get that. But if I'm not mistaken, this is it for this soft edge. This soft edge is established properly, it is accurate enough, it is good enough. I will need to darken some spots where the beard really gets things darker, but for the most part, uh, this established the, the values pretty well. Now, hopefully I will get that side of the hair there darker. I don't know why I skipped that, that was a dumb move, but we'll see. Now, one thing to remember, again, um, I'm gradually using darker washes, which might have been a mistake, Maybe it was better to continue with the thin washes here, even at this stage. And one more thing I still haven't learned, because that's an insight I gained while watching this with you, actually. Pre-wet. Everything that needs to have a soft edge, pre-wet, and only then start the wash, if possible, if it fits the, the reference. It's not Again, nothing is a rule to follow. It's just about, it would have been probably better. Uh, better, more accurate for what I'm after. Like this edge right here, I right? should have pre-wetted like before, should have learned from the previous wash, uh, but that's fine. Uh, the goal here is to finish off these smooth uh, uh, light and dark nuances and just establish the baseline for, for the shadow here um, for everything that isn't the darker beard, okay? Um, again, if I were faster, better, more experienced, uh, maybe started this wash, wash wetter, maybe I could have uh, established more of the darker spots too, right now. Now, one thing to have in mind, I have paintings where I was able to establish that, that I've done like two years ago even, uh, where I've done arguably better than this one. Why am I, two years later, doing worse? Well, there's an explanation for that. The level of accuracy I aspire to is greater, and that level of accuracy demands for a different technique. And that technique is something I'm less familiar with. Which is why the result is inferior. Because I'm using techniques I'm not used to. I'm using processes I'm not used to. I'm doing a lot of things I'm not used to. And that's just a natural part of growth. Okay? Uh, so have that in mind. Growth can be very non-linear. It probably is very non-linear. If you look at it long, long enough, on a long enough trend, it will be an upward trend, um, but it's very non-linear. Um, you're gonna have ups, downs, learn, relearn, things you thought you knew well, now with a, a cleaner eyes that demand more accuracy, you won't be as good at, and you will need to almost take three steps back in order to take six steps forward, right? That's a, that's a very extreme analogy, but maybe two to take three forward. You know, maybe that's more accurate. Now, after these intense washes, I feel like, okay, I just need some respite, some rest. And so I'm moving on to something a little more linear, a little simpler, just establishing some of these uh, dark shadows um, around the glasses. It's kind of a very gentle process, uh, kind of, you know, just establishing it slowly. I kind of messed this shape up because this is the shadow, not the, this is the cast shadow, not the shadow on the glasses. And then I'm like, oh, I painted the cast shadow first. That's fine. Not the end of the world. Um, again, if you established everything uh, as accurately as possible, these small details, they, they appear to be the thing that makes the painting beautiful, but it's actually the bigger shapes, the bigger transitions, the bigger, more accurate, you know, that's the thing that makes the painting look better. Now, again, 
one with more experience could have probably established all of this side of the face with all the nuances, with the lights and darks and the smooth transitions next to the glasses, maybe in one go, you know, maybe it would be possible for someone like that. I'm still not there. Um, by the way, maybe using bigger brushes, the bigger brushes that still allow you some control over accuracy. There's a lot of things that can be, this world is huge. The more I learn, the more I understand how much I uh, yet, I have yet to master um, it's very interesting, right? This shadow is going to do a lot of heavy lifting to explain the frame of the glasses, so that's an important one. Uh, by the way, this is a fairly wet wash I have on my brush. It may look strong, dark, that's just because it's a thin shape and it's a thin brush, um, so yeah. Uh, I didn't talk too much about my materials here. Uh, the brush I've, I just used is a Lebensen brush. Uh, the other brush I used throughout the entire process was, I believe, mostly Skoda brushes. If you want to get the same brushes I have, just check out the link below. There's going to be like a freewatercolor.com forward slash gear. G-E-A-R, my gear. Uh, that's where you can see all of my most commonly used materials, including paints, including my palette, including my whatever, paper, everything. If something is not covered there, feel free to ask, of course, in a comment. I'm trying to establish this cast shadow. Uh, it's really important, the shadow mimics the shape on which it casts, which is the nose. So that roundedness is really important. More important than the shape of the object casting the shadow. Okay? It's rounded too, so it's a double effect. It's just round, it, it encircles the nose. That's something to be aware of. <coughs> um, but yeah, you know that's, that's pretty much... Uh, it for this cast shadow. These are easier details to get. Pre-wet, just to get this bit of a darker shadow right there, uh, that, that you can see. These are kind of, again, my, my resting time, because the previous stages, let me lower the pen level. Um, these were really the easier parts. Now, n there are much harder parts. So now I'm gonna pre-wet once again. My goal is to establish some of the, the darker spots here, uh, which is gonna be the um, darkest spots mainly on the beard. So right now I am pre-wetting a lot more because I just want to do, this is what I should have done in the previous washes. Uh, but I do want to get you know some of these dark spots. Hopefully I'm able to do this in this wash. I don't remember if there's anything else. Like if there's another wash after that, I believe that's it. Uh, but you'll see, okay. So I'm starting again the, with this top part. So I actually did push it a little darker. I'm uh, being quite careful. I'm gonna continue up towards the hair. Uh, but everything at its time. It's much better to first establish all of these mid-range shadows and only then move on to the darker shadows within them. Um, because you have to remember, things dry. I pre-wet things, but they're, they're starting to dry. So you have to think about this. Um, and now hopefully, the more this painting matures, the more sense it makes, right? So right now, this all of these darks, they, they may look awkward the moment I put them on, and that's something you'll experience with your paintings, but it will make more sense in the long run of the painting, quote unquote. Now, I should have just continued this wash fast now, but I'm t tempted to start establishing the darkest darks. I should have taken care of that lower edge, so you'll see some patchiness there in a second. But you know, whatever, <laughs> it's, it's part of it. Again, I'm using a different approach and, and different, um, not te same techniques, but in different ways. So I'm not used to a lot of the ways I'm doing things now, um, which is why it's a little awkward, you know. Uh, but still, the most important thing right now is because I already started establishing those this dark, dark area, the darkest part in the beard, where the transition from light to dark happens, uh, and also a bit in the lower end there you see, and the ear and the hair as well, which I'll have to address. Um, now again, maybe I should have pre-wet more. Maybe the, the first part where I just used clean water, maybe I should have added more. That would give me more time to work on the ear. I just went over it one time. Um, again, you gotta balance the fear of lifting a previous layer with actually the need for wetness on paper, right? You have the paper, there's already some paint on it. Maybe you're 80% through the painting and still you end up pre-wetting over that. So it's a balance, right? Is it is it wet enough? Is it not wet enough? Am I at risk of lifting back the previous layers? If you're using uh, paper that is pulp, 
there's no prayer of doing this. So if you're failing this with pulp paper, not cotton, it's probably not your fault. There is a way to paint anything on pulp paper, really, but the, the approach necessary is more direct because the paint just stays on top of the paper. So that's where a la prima works much better, actually. Um, whereas, you know, in this paper, you can allow yourself to do more of these gradual transitions on, um, and here's the that edge is starting to reveal itself where I should have continued to wash down right around the neck. Um, but yeah, on pull paper, you have no prayer of doing this, which is totally fine. It calls for a different technique. Um, I would say on hot press, because I'm using cold press, hot press paper, you can do the exact same thing. The one caveat is maybe even more water. Maybe even more water in the first washes, in the pre-wetting over existing washes. You kind of need more water on a, on a hot press paper, generally speaking, for everything. Because um, the, otherwise the paint will dry unevenly, even in places where you'll be saying to yourself, oh, but, but when I do this on cold press, I don't get these hard edges. I'm doing the exact same thing. On cold press, I don't get them. On hot press, I do. It's just the part of the game. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Don't hate the game. Just play it, right? Um, by the way, there is a very strong, I think, truth, like an actual truth to using more water when painting watercolor. The more water you use, the more you allow the paint to work by nature's way. Wet in wet is a very nature-ish kind of way. Look at this soft transition on the cheek, under the glasses. There's no way to get that down micromanaging it. The fact I pre-wet, even though I did it many times, that's the thing that allowed me to do this. The fact that I really pre-wet it. it le it's letting nature take its course. And watercolor, more than other mediums, is nature in action. Yeah, everything is nature. Even oils, right? Oil is a part of nature. And it will slowly um, transition and shift throughout the night. But watercolor is even more. That's on a... On a and a time machine, everything happens much faster. The more you can get out of its way, the better. And one major way of getting out of the paint's way is more water, right? Uh, so there's, a, a, I think, a significant truth to using more water, actually. Um, so now we are at a point where we established most, most of the key components. Um, I'm at a crossroad where I'm pondering whether I do want to cover this wash again with darker paint and I end up not doing it. I end up deciding against it because I feel like if I'm going to layer another wash on top of that, I'm going to lose some of the freshness. And I told you already the hair is a little lighter. If I push this shadow to be very dark, the hair is going to look off balance. I am not interested in that. Uh, so now it's mostly about corrections and uh, optimization time. So there's a shadow here, small area. I'm going to establish that. First, I put wet paint. Now I'm starting to, or maybe it was just water, then wet paint. And then gradually, the more this goes, I'm putting in darker and darker paint to really show the creases of the smile, right? Smile, you get to these creases here. Um, and that's a great, I think, point where I just established what I needed to in one go uh, pretty well, right? And by the way, the, the camera doesn't do it justice. Wait till you see the scanned result looks much, much better, I promise. Um, as, as always, pretty much. Um, but you see me now working smaller scale, more with the small brush. Um, I will be just establishing the details. There will be some gel pen in a second. I'll bring back some details. Actually, I don't remember now. Am I darkening other areas again? I actually don't remember. This needs to be darker for sure. Uh, and I will use this opportunity to darken some of the hair. You'll see me do that now. Uh, so let's push this area once again to be darker. There's actually uh, the highlight above it. It's cool. It's good that it has a hard edge. That's how it is uh, in the photo too, you'll notice. Uh, but then there's the soft transition into the hair. That's really important just to start establishing that dark paint. You see me, you'll see me in a second really digging into the uh, well. Um, and trying, I'm not going to cover everything up. Because look at all of these beautiful, right, swooshes I put in the very first wash, if you remember. These are beautiful. I don't want to destroy them. So I am I always have that in mind. I'm going to darken the core of the hair. But I'm not going to let it uh, destroy other parts. I'm going to be very careful and deliberate there. Um, so it, And I'm going to probably smoothen it out the more it goes back, right? So I pre-wet, actually, which is better. 
Here I remember to pre-wet, uh, and that will give me a smooth transition and will maintain that freshness from the first wash, which was, I think, the most important thing for me here. Again, we've established so much beautiful, uh, so many beautiful transitions, so many beautiful details. I don't want to miss that. So what I'm doing right now is just... Um, it's just feeding it with some more details, right? I don't look at this as core painting action. I look at it more like details here and there. Um, the, the place I put those details is where I do see it significantly darker, but not in all places I see it darker, just here and there, just careful. Not to overdo it, that's the most important thing. Now I'm gonna smoothen out this area with some, uh, not fully, wet paint because I still want this to flow and not get too many backgrounds. It's just a little softer paint there um, to get a smooth transition into the shadow on the face. Um, I, I, you know, this is it's now 95% done. Not even 90, it's 95% done. The heavy lifting was this complex, like look at my eye, complex, if you're, if you're just listening, complex wash over the side of the face. That was the, the main after doing these washes, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need a rest. I need a rest because you're so focused on it. You're so focused on what's going on. Um, and yeah, and I do have this ugly little white border around the ear. Lessons learned for next time. Maybe try and merge some more areas. Maybe merge more smartly, more cleverly. Um, maybe, like, why didn't I put now the dark on the... Glasses. Maybe I was scared of the temple area, you know, whatever. Because uh, the gla the side of the glasses is really sticking out like a sore thumb, like that white border around the ear, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly what you'll gain from this video technique-wise. I, 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 hopefully you will, but I don't know, I don't know exactly what it is. Um, but I will go back to the previous point. A lot of this needs to be experienced uh, on a very personal basis. Uh, the more you experience it, the more relatable it's going to be. And then it may answer some questions you've had. Um, one thing I find is, again, with every painting I do, the more answers I get and the more clear things become, and the more I know what questions to ask, which is probably even more important. Uh, now onto the nose. Do you see there's some nuance there? Hopefully I'll be able to get it this time. Um, there is a darker area and then a lighter area right above the nostril. So I feel like I can kind of push the um, darker area there. No, I did paint over the highlight that I should leave. So I, I lifted that real quick. Leave the highlight. Leave the highlight alone. Continue with this wash. Probably the upper lip should be darker too. Uh, so that's something I'll probably do in a second. I, I kind of uh, didn't get the uh, the maximum out of the nose here. Could have gotten much more in terms of nuance. Um, if look at is it um, that very successful portrait? I, I think it's there, over there that I showed you in the last live stream. That's where I really brought the most out of the nose. Here it's it's okay. It's not the best my best work when it comes to noses, but it's okay. Uh, hopefully that's not something a nose surgeon will say. I'm just a painter, so it's cool. <laughs> uh, it, but you see, now I'm moving with wet paint into uh, an area that's starting to dry. So I'm starting to move into a risk land. I don't want to take too many risks there, actually. So, But there's a lot of nuances there under the nose, under the nostril. There's a lot that goes on there uh, that I could have, uh, had I had the right timing, uh, gotten a little better. Uh, by the way, this paint may be too thick, you know, maybe I could have gotten away with doing wet and wet with thinner paint, just a tad bit thinner, like I'm trying now, um, so that it will spread out a little more, because one thing you want to think of, yes, when the paper is uh, starting to dry, you need to use thicker paint, but, but you can take even that overboard, you know, um, that's an interesting thing actually to try. Uh, one thing I figured is you can get away with lighter paint on the brush, almost if you squeeze out most of the water from it, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, all of these nuances, they're mechanical. So it's mechanical, you have to experience them on your own. Uh, but I think it's, yeah, I wonder where I'll take the process now. I don't actually remember exactly what I'm doing each stage. Uh, by the way, you'll notice my, my hands look really gray in the, in the photography. That's because the video was a little too red, so I ended up... Um, uh, decreasing the red color on the entire video just to have a good color balance so that it, and it still is more red you'll notice than the 
the picture. It's not red because I'm using red paint. It's just the camera, you know, uh, so that's fine. That's why my hands look a little like I'm almost like a zombie. Sorry about that. Um, but here I am just darkening a few of these spots. Just very contained, small area. Hopefully I'll merge it with the lip. Exactly. That's what I wanted to see. Um, now we're really talking about, uh, again, small corrections, small optimizations. The main bulk of the painting was done in those vast, large washes that are the scariest, to be honest with you. Um, the reality is, if you're aiming for a high level of realism, high level of detail, the process almost calls for taking a slower, more deliberate, more gradual approach. Now, I will say as a caveat, I am seeing some artists that are able to get that first stroke to look perfect. Um, that's, I think, the ultimate for me. I do hope to get there. Um, I do aim to get there. But this is almost, like I said, a detour along the way to there, where I learned, okay, I need more water. I need a more careful nuance of edges. I need more time. Um, and I think ultimately, as I bring this technique onto my own style, and something I'll expand upon in a moment, as I bring this technique more into my own style, it will, ironically enough, take a more a la prima turn, okay? Now, the fact that you're using very wet washes does not mean it can't be more a la prima, right? You can push things to be darker faster, but with wetter washes to begin with. Um, here I am just putting in some highlights for the um, stubble that catches the light, okay? Very gentle. I'm actually putting less than I see because it's still not, it shouldn't be paper white. It should be just a little bit lighter. Again, everything in the shadow is darker than the highlights. Remember that. Now, I did mention I'm going to expand upon bringing things into my own style. Everything I show you, everything I teach, everything I demonstrate, Never take anything as gospel. There's always a need to take things through one's own filter. Because unless you do that, you'll ultimately lose your way. The reason is you're going to start painting like other people. So even though, again, context matters. Even though I'm doing this video really following someone else's technique and approach... There's still a reason for that. It's a step. But ultimately, the approach I enjoy is getting a lot done directly and boldly. Now the question becomes, how can I bring this accuracy into my own style? Always going through my own filter. And if I have to do things slowly like this, that's fine. You know, that's, that's the means to the end. That's okay. But how can I and where can I bring this to my own desire? You have your own desire. You have your own subject matters that you like. Um, maybe you learn something from this technique to bring into pet portraits, right? Or uh, uh, cityscapes, landscapes, trees, still life, whatever it is you like painting. How can you bring the lessons you learn here into your own style and favorite subject matter and approach even? Right, combining approaches. Uh, now I'm going to put in, be putting some of the hairs. I love that stage. It's fun. I'm just using a white gel pen. Again, you can find everything in my gear link down below. Um, usually I'll also uh, bring in the um, uh, thin Lebanon brush and start getting some darker hairs because I'm going to paint light over dark and dark over light to get the contrast. So where the hair is dark, I'm using the white gel pen. Ideally on the face, I would bring just... Um, you know, a thin brush and use very light paint. Uh, I just don't see too many dark hairs here. All I'm seeing is where they are contrasted with the darks. So that's what I'm putting in. Didn't put any, I don't think I put any like actual hairs there <coughs> in, in brush, in brush form with dark paint. And I think all the brushes are just going to be white gel pen now we're really at the end of this process in a second i'll show you the end result but i, mean, I just want to make sure that i thoroughly do this okay signing this let's see the end result to me the scanned version looks much much better um, maybe the highlights are a little out of place but whatever um, really like how this one turned out um, was done with a technique and approach 
I'm not used to. So I can only expect this to improve and to grow more and to be brought more into my own style. I feel like this is a big step in that direction. Um, and I hope you gained something out of it, right? Uh, and let me know below in a comment. I'm curious to hear. And if you stuck around till the end, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. I do want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to get a credit at the end of the video, um, you can just donate like a, a, a buck monthly and know that you're a big, big part of what I'm doing here in these videos. Um, and just know that um, your great help into bringing a lot of these, just, just tons of free content. That's my bread and butter. I don't like to put things behind a paywall, which is why my Patreon is aimed more towards if you just want to give, because a lot of people have been asking me, how can I donate? I, blah, blah, blah. You know, some people are interested in, in return, like they want a course, they want a painting, but a lot of people just want to give in order to give and I didn't have a good solution which is why I went with Patreon at the end of the day so if you want to be a part of that and know that your great help even just one dollar a month is huge because it adds up it really does um, so and, and of course besides the courses and everything that I'm super grateful to anyone who gets so don't forget I'm going to put a link for, for everything in the description box if you uh, want to learn how to paint more freely more loosely less rigid get out of watercolors way the frustration free watercolor course maybe for you down below now if you're interested more in this style what you've seen here you may want to check out the watercolor realism course because I show two portraits that are very similar to this uh, and with very interesting results I think but in any case I'm going to wrap it up now thank you so so much really appreciate it we'll see you in the next video until then take care